Welcome back to the channel. It is uh, about halfway through winter here and it was time for me to uh, waterproof my gloves again. These uh, have been holding up really well, but uh, starting to get a few wet spots where it's wetted through. Um, also got a new set of gloves and I wanted to go ahead and waterproof those and show you how to uh, get a uh, take, take a very inexpensive pair of gloves and turn it into a great pair of ski gloves or outdoor gloves or winter gloves. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to be using is a snow seal. And these gloves, when they arrive, this pair, for this very reason, actually comes with uh, some uh, waterproofing, which is great stuff. Uh, I use this on boots a lot. Um, I found that for gloves, I prefer the snow seal, but you know, I mean, uh, to each their own and both of them are probably going to get you where you want to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side. And now I've got this pair that I did a few years ago and actually it has held up quite nicely. Um, you can see there are a few, I don't know if it's, you can see on the camera here, but there are a few uh, lighter spots. And that's where the, um, the waterproofing has, has worn out. And it's, it's in the high wear areas, like over here along the edge where the ski poles will hit. Um, also up here on top where there's, there's more wear and tear. And so that uh, here on the knuckles as well. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-waterproof these. And I'm going to do these new ones for the first time. Uh, these are full leather. The other ones are, are half leather. Uh, let me just go ahead and open these up. And the thing about these gloves is they are great, uh, super affordable, super burly. I mean, I've, I've used these for a number of seasons. Um, but when you get them, they are pretty, uh, pretty stiff. And so, you know, you put your hand in here and it is quite an effort to flex these gloves. And um, I'm going to show you a little tip to, to work through that, uh, make it a lot easier. As you can see with these, These are way more subtle or supple and uh, easy to flex. And so we're going to get these as much like these as possible. So we're going to start with the new ones. First of all, put these off to the side here, start with the new ones. And what I use when I'm using a uh, snow seal is there are a number of ways to apply this. You could use like a brush for shoes, uh, shoe polish. Uh, what I do is I just go ahead and take a snack size Ziploc bag and use my fingers. So I just kind of, dip them in. This gives me a nice tactile way of working the seal, the sealant and the wax into these. So I'm going to put this on one of my hands. I'm going to take this where I've got it here and I'm just going to start working it in all over. And getting a lot in there is, is great because what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, a, a heat gun or in this case a blow dryer, a hair dryer to actually melt it in. And this will take maybe a couple of coats and really suck up all of this wax so that you really get that deep penetration and, and it lasts a long time keeping that moisture out, keeping that water out. Uh, the nice thing about using waxes on leather is that it still lets the leather breathe to an extent. And, uh, and so you don't get that feel like you do if you've got a, uh, a fully sealed or fully waterproof, like a dish glove or something like that. And I'm just going to try to get every part of this and every nook and cranny and really put it on heavy because it is going to soak up a lot of this. And this reinforced suede area in here is going to soak up a lot. All along the cuff, make sure every part of it is covered. All right, so I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to take the 
blow dryer to it. You just put it on the hot setting and it seems to work pretty well. If you get a little bit on your fingers, you can wipe it on whatever you're going to be treating next. And what you'll be able to see is you'll see this start to just melt in. And I mentioned that these come really stiff and one way to loosen them up to get them more supple is as you're doing this, especially with the heat and with the, with the oils and the waxes is start to flex them and sort of press them in the position that you want to be able to make the fist. Once you have the glove hot, you can do a second coat and start working it in a little bit more. It's going to melt right into that hot leather. As you keep moving that fist to the position that you're going to want it, it'll just be that much easier to loosen it up. Now this is going to change the color of the glove a little bit. I, I like the look that it gives it, but uh, just keep that in mind if you've you know, decided to do this uh, with an expensive pair. Because I mean, you can do this with, with any pair of uh, leather gloves. The more you work that in, the better it's going to keep you dry. I find that uh, I have to re waterproof my gloves about every uh, couple seasons, season or two. It's certainly something you can do every season if you're into that. All right, and there's a little bit of residue on here. So since I'm gonna be doing these older pair of gloves, I'm just gonna use that to sort of wipe off the rest that's here. Uh, the first time you use them, first time or two, uh, there'll be a little bit of this wax. So just be careful what you touch. If you're touching your ski poles, it doesn't matter. All right, so kind of give you a, a view of what it looks like halfway through there. Put this off to the side while I do this next one. You can go through this pretty fast. You don't have to spend too much time on it. You can always come back and do it later. You know, like I said, if it's something you need to do once a season, once every two or three seasons, uh, you know, you just find a day when you have a little bit of time and sit down and do it. And what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that this wax gets in everywhere. Now that it looks pretty good, Wipe my hand off on the gloves I'm going to do next. And you don't need to worry about uh, you know, feeling the wax come through into the glove when you're doing this at all. Um, it, it really stays in the leather layer. The insulation of these is, it's pretty good and thick enough that it's not gonna, you're not gonna feel it. Okay, 
And there are some companies that will basically sell you a glove just like this, uh, with this already done. And if that's your, if that's your jam, then, then good on you. But this is one way to take an inexpensive pair of gloves that, I mean, this will probably last, uh, oh, this will probably last maybe forever, who knows. And if they don't, it's no big loss. Hit it with the heat once more. I'll wipe off my hands again. So that's uh, two of the gloves. Now when I say it makes them more supple, it makes them more supple compared to uh, how they came. Obviously uh, you're not gonna be, you know, tying any knots or doing any intricate work uh, with these gloves. They're still, they're still work gloves, uh, but these work gloves are gonna uh, last a long time. They're gonna keep my hands nice and dry. They're gonna keep them warm. Uh, they're insulated and they're super inexpensive. So even if their burliness fails, you know, I can, get another pair. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go ahead and do the other gloves here. Uh, my recorder says that the battery is getting low, so I'll go ahead and stop there. And um, there's nothing special to what I'm going to do with these. I only waterproof the, uh, the leather parts of it. As far as the fabric parts, uh, you could spray on some D, you know, DWR if you wanted to. Uh, I haven't found a need to do that. I find that my body heat keeps them pretty dry as long as it's as long as it's just snow. Um, I wouldn't wear these in the rain necessarily. But um, overall, I hope you found this helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments or if you did this or if you have uh, tips that will make this even better or uh, even cleaner. Um, as you can see, it's not too dirty. There's a little bit of uh, wax here. I'll have to clean that off here. So you want to keep this uh, keep this covered in some way. Um, you know, as far as ventilation, um, you know, I don't have any special ventilation. It doesn't really smell that strongly. Uh, of course, I've been you know working with it. I have to see uh, if I step out for a minute, and come back, what it smells like. But um, you know, maybe open a window. Uh, it should air out really fast. Whatever it is, it's not a super strong smell. These are mostly, uh, I think, natural oils and waxes that go in this. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been uh, uh, Climb, Ski, Repeat. Come back to you. Bye now. I go back and hit these. I realized as I was working on my older pair that I had neglected to waterproof the leather pull tabs that come with the gloves. They're actually uh, super handy for pulling the gloves on. So, you, you know, you're not just pulling on that stretchy uh, ribbed part. Do these real fast. All right, there we go. Thanks for watching. All right, looks like we have a little bit of time left on this recorder. Let's see what we can do. Gonna give it a try. This won't be quite as involved as the last pair I did, first of all, because they've already been treated. And so really I'm just sort of topping off the treatment that's there.
wipe off some of the excess here. And it occurred to me that I did not waterproof the pull tabs on the full leather pair that I just did. So I will hit that in just a second. That's all she wrote. 